Okay, I have the Matura Champions C55. Um, I've done the C43 on my channel. This is their newer version of the lock. Um, and they've made some changes to it. Instead of having four rotors on the bottom, they gave one of those up. So there's only three rotors on the bottom. And instead they put this little passive like mathematical symbol here. I got divides. I saw they have plus ones. Uh, I'm guessing they have minus and times as well. And then in the back, they put a little pin that will lift this uh, wheel on the key. And what that does is interact with the interactive element on top. So they have a sixth pin on top. So the, the C43 only has five pins. This one has a sixth one, which is an interactive pin. Um, the other five, I think, are pretty pretty much the same as the C43. You've got spools and standards pushing on um, standard and mushroom key pins. So we'll go ahead and go try pick. I'll show some more details later. The rotors on the bottom have a little bit different design. We'll, we'll talk about that during the gut. Um, or while I'm picking them, we'll see. In any case, uh, I have this, I'm going to go counterclockwise and I have this uh, Honest Dongshi flag that I've uh, filed down because they come really, really thick. Um, so starting at the front, uh, number one is springy, two springy, but then stops. So I'm not going to touch it because it's springy. Three, little click there. Four is a little springy. Five is binding. And I've picked this once before, so I know that five uh, lifts higher than this flag can lift. So rather than lift it with this, um, normally I'd lift it as high as I can, realize I, I can't get it high enough. And then I have this pick I made for the C43 for the high lifts. Um, and I'll just go ahead and lift that pin with this to save some time, rather than going back and forth between the, the two picks. Um, hold on, make sure I'm lifting the right. Hopefully I didn't lift the wrong pin. Where is it? This this pick, while it can lift higher, uh, it doesn't have the best feedback. I think that's it right there. So it's hard to feel if you're on the pin or not. I clicked there, but I didn't feel anything on the tension wrench, so. I don't know if that was what I was looking for. I'm going to feel around for a little bit longer. And then if I don't feel anything, I'll assume that I got it. If I didn't feel anything, I'll have a tensioner so that. I'm going to go back with the Dongxi. Maybe I can feel what's going on back there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume I got it. But I didn't feel any movement on the tensioner, so I'm kind of skeptical. Two still feels the same. Three still the same. Four got a click out of four now, and now I felt a little bit of something out of the tensioner. Let's check again. One, no, two. Two feels like it's binding now. Okay, got a click out of two. Gave, I think it gave me a little bit of counter rotation, so maybe that was one of our spools. Um. Uh, let's see, one, one is not binding. Everything feels a little springy. Yeah, I'm gonna check the interactive. So if I follow this right piece of wording here, straight back with this uh, hook seven from Peterson, it lifts up right around there. And the pin can still be a little bit hard to find. I think that's where it's at. And if you don't know about this interactive pin, um, I could imagine this would be a very difficult lock to pick. All right, I just lifted it and I got a lot of rot rotation. I'm in some sort of false set here. So I'll go back to this. Uh, all right, pin one is giving me some counter rotation here. So I'm gonna keep lifting that. Oh, it's going really high. All right, I think I got pin one, but I don't have a lot of my false set. Let me see if that maybe the interactive fell back down again. I think it's right about there. I drop into something. Oops. 
All right, there we go. I clicked it, and I got my false set back. Um, I think it might be about time to go to rotors. Yeah, everything feels pretty set. Let's check out these rotors. So the rotors have two pins sticking up from them, so you can push them on the close side or the far side to rotate them back and forth, whereas the uh, C43 only had pin on one side, so you have to push it from the left and then push it from the right, which was a little bit more annoying. But because there's two pins in here, it's a little more cramped, and it can be a little bit difficult to find your way around. I forget if I used the key. To, oh, I'll show the key afterwards. I should have used the key before I started because it would scramble up the rotors. But um, I forgot, I think. Maybe I used it. I don't remember. Um, they're a little hard to see because I have no light here. I might switch on something to help me with this. But it feels like feels like this first one might be binding. Let off the so the, the false gates on these they, they bite really hard. So you gotta let all the way off the tension, but you don't have to worry about it. You can let off the tension and the top doesn't drop. So you can it's very very isolated at least for you to work um, can't tell what pin I'm on I'm gonna get uh, a magnifier out here to help my ailing eyes with a bit of light and see if this will help me see I don't know I haven't picked it in front of the camera yet so right, let's see if I can see that at least a little something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right so this first rotor here I see it's binding it's not moving at all let me see if I can get the pin the, the rotor, rotor to rotate by pushing on this pin here And get on it. It's hard from this angle. Look at the camera there. It's really hard to get on this pin and rotate it. Let off my tension. There we go. We're rotating. It's, it's jiggling. No, it's not jiggling. So when I turn tension way up, oh, maybe. Let's see. How about now, I just clicked it in another click. Oh, now it's really jiggling. So I can move uh, one of the pins. I kind of wiggle it left and right like that um, with the tip of the pick, and I can see it has good range of motion. So I'd say that one is set. Second rotor appears to be binding. I think I see the next pin. Are we jiggling? Um, front rotor is still jiggling. Second rotor. And we're open. Second rotor was uh, not jiggling. Second rotor, so first rotor, I got to the set jiggling. Second one was kind of loose, just wobbling back and forth. Got to the third one, uh, it was binding hard. I set it, then the second one was binding, and I touched it, and it popped open. So let's take a look inside. It's a little bit of a pain because it's a double euro. But let's uh, get some focus. And take this guy out of here. Oh, there's the key. Um, so I, I removed the actuator out the middle, otherwise it's a whole nother step to, to remove, which can take a lot of time. But there we are, picked. So pop that back up. There is a clip to remove right here. And uh, with the Sparrow's gut wrench, it's pretty easy to get in there and just pull on it like that. You see how it comes part way out like that? And uh, you can pull a bit further until it gives you a little bit of a 
gap here to get your wrench under and then you should be able to get it up the rest of the way I think come on no it doesn't want to be nice today let's see persuade it with some pliers maybe nope huh it feels like it went too it rotated too far so I'm gonna push it back some get rotated too far around and now there we go there's that clip get us a digs tray here uh, so my followers are too small um, diameter so it's a little bit annoying but we'll try so put the key in give a little bit of rotation and I'll do it up and down because there's there's pieces from every which direction on this uh, in this lock on this key so let's go ahead and push that down a bit or not oh I'm dumb all right I'm I lost track which side I'm gutting I'm gutting this side <laughs> I removed the clip over here okay Cutting the side I picked. Oops. There we go. Okay. Um, I think this way avoids the most stuff. So do that. Push it down a little. You hear that click? That is the uh, the driver dropping down to the height of the follower because the follower is too small actually I can push this down further like that I got to catch the the sidebar down here the sidebar is going to drop out because that one has got a spring on it whereas the pins don't so push that down the third one not really necessary but it makes it a little bit safer there we go all right so that's out Let's take a look at what we got here. We got a sidebar on this side. Oh, I got a pin falling out the other side, but it's a passive pin, I think. There's a passive pin falling out. Put that in right there. Okay. Start with the sidebar. So the sidebar is right here. That sidebar has two little springs on it and um, four little fingers. So it's got the four fingers for the four rotors, even though it only has three rotors in it. So the front is that side. I'll put this over here. Um, next, oh, that almost fell out. Uh, we will go for whatever that is. That's a rotor. Okay, so that's the third rotor. So one, two, three. We'll put that right here. Well, third rotor, but then there's that front pin. So I'll put in slot four there. Um, there's this. Uh, this is pin at the back is for the interactive element. I was telling you it pushes up on that. Oh, uh, that's the front pin. This is the mathematical symbol at the front. All it is is a passive uh, pin. So you, as long as you don't push it, you can turn. Get it. Let's see if I can get rotor, rotor number one. Oh, all right. I got, <laughs> I got passive pins four and five out. So we'll put one, two, three, four, and passive pin five. And I know that these just alternate between a spike and a flat spike, flat spike on this side. Man, there's a better way to do this. Um, but let's keep going. I'm trying to get rotor one now. Uh, rotor two wants to come. I'll get rotor two. All right, there's rotor two. I'll show you the rotors in a second, um, how they have false gates and all that fun stuff. All right, there's rotor one. Fell right into its slot upside down. And then there's the top interactive pin, or the last in. So this is the, the pin that pushes up on the interactive element. Then more passive pins here on the side. Number three. Number two. And number one. So those are all passive pins. They have no, um, I'm gonna slide them down here. They have no spring associated with them. As long as you don't push them, uh, you don't have to pick them or anything. 
Uh, all right, now top pins. Oh, I felt something else on the bottom. What is that? Oh, okay. I should mention this. The pins rest on the rotors. So if the key is not holding the pins, the pins are now free to fall through the rotor holes. So you can't progressive pick it without the rotors in there. They have to be in there. But you could remove the sidebar if you wanted to uh, and just pick the top pins. So I'm going to actually cut that through the bottom. There it is. So that's pin one. Pin one is a standard. Pin two doesn't want to fall through, does it? No, nope, pin two doesn't want to fall through. So we'll take, we'll take some out the top. Pin two, there we go. Pin two is a mushroom uh, pin. Pin three, standard. Pin four has fallen all the way down. Is a mushroom pin. Pin five has fallen down, standard. And the interactive pin is right there. And the interactive pin has this like, just like cone top to it like that so I don't think you can overset that that's why I was just pushing at that willy-nilly so there's that um, no like counter mill or anything but you can see it has I guess construction hole pinning there uh, for construction keying there's the passive side pins and the passive front element three rotors and then that pin that lifts the interactive the cutaway for the sidebar and the slot for the key then on the top, we've got first pin is a spool, brass colored spool, and all these springs are the same. Pin two is a steel color spool, could be steel or nickel plated brass, I, I don't know. Uh, take that follower out. Then we got a Standard pin in three, standard driver. And we got a spool in four. So I felt the this uh, the spool primarily on one, F two and four. I think they mostly gave me click. One of them gave me a little bit of counter rotation, but mostly it was just kind of a click. Um, so they didn't they didn't play too hard. It was mainly pin one that was giving me the counter rotation. So. Um, because it was, I had to lift that one really high, pin one. So it played really, the spool played well on number one. Pin five is a standard, and pin six, the interactive driver, is a standard with a normal spring. So I think this is the first time this has been picked on video and gutted. But um, how does it rate compared to the C43? I mean, it does have that interactive. If you don't know about it, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, like you would never, it, it, it really keep you out, but removing a rotor, I think the rotors were kind of the prime elements. They, um, that they got rid of one, uh, is, is not such a good thing. And this one didn't ping pong as much as on top, but it could just be this particular, um, lock I got, right. It is not the, the model. So looking at these, uh, rotors, we've got, we've got two little, posts up top they're different lengths you can see one is longer than the other the fat one is longer than the the skinny short one and those the the skinny short one actually points towards the bow of the key and travels along the shallow track whereas the fat long one goes around along the deeper track you can maybe make out that there's two tracks there and that will turn this rotate it back and forth and you can see that groove there that's the true gate and the um, finger on the sidebar has to drop into that gate. But you might not be able to see this on the camera. There is, let me see if I can just zoom it down. There is um, a false gate on here that is uh, pretty effective, which is right there. You can see the deep groove and then you can see that thinner groove next to it right so that will stop you from rotating if you have any tension on there but but it's not terrible because you can let go of tension almost completely and then you can get out of those just fine because um there's a pretty deep uh false set before that sidebar engages which means that you're not going to drop any top pins while you're letting off the tension to work with the sidebar in any case that is 
the Motura Champions C55. Pretty new lock uh, from Italy. Hope, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.